Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at sewing knife pleats. Now this is probably the most basic type of pleat that you would already be familiar with. We use this in the pleated skirt, we've also used it on the back of the Piccadilly Peacoat, and then you can have individual pleats on designs like the Harper skirt or somewhere where you have a single pleat as an accent. Now when you're working with something like a skirt and you have a long row of pleats and you have a very long piece of fabric that you're trying to consistently mark, fold, pin, press, and sew to get consistent pleats, this can be very challenging. You can draw lines, mark lines, use different colored pins, and then consistently work to fold that and press as you go and hope that you have all your measurements perfect so that it lines up with the waistband or yoke of the garment that you need to attach it to. Now I have a few methods that I'm going to demonstrate. One is directly on the machine, no marking required, and we will work through to just run a row of pleats for the pleated skirt. Then we're going to take a look at a more traditional type of tool called a pleating board. Now this is something that couturiers use to do all this fantastic pleating that you see on these really pretty dresses that have very tiny pleats or very detailed design pleats. So this is like a simplified version for just some basic pleating and I'll show you how to put one together using freezer paper and we will do the most consistent pleat sizes which are half inch or three quarter inch which are what we use in a variety of the patterns that we have at Liberty Jane. All right, here I am at the machine and I have the pleated skirt for 18 inch dolls. I have my pattern piece sitting right here and I have the length of the skirt already cut out and it's already hemmed. So I have my skirt piece and I have no markings on this at all at this point. So to start, what I'm gonna do is take my pattern and I have this folded as I was just looking at where the pleats would fold. So the first couple are folded so that I can easily use this and my machine to set my spacing for my pleats. Now I'm going to slide this under the presser foot and I'm going to line up my seam allowance, my stitch line right here where this pleat is going to need to fold back inside. So you can see right here this is how the pleat will fold back. It'll fold just before that seam line and then I'll have those pleat markings lined up and then my next pleat is going to fold back just like this, right up to the first pleat. So every pleat on this pattern is three quarters inch. That's showing between the pleats. So from the seam allowance line to the fold line is three quarters of an inch, and then to the next pleat fold on this top side is three quarters of an inch. And that will consistently work its way down the whole entire length of the skirt. So to set this mark on my machine, I'm going to put this under my presser foot and lower my needle, and then I'm gonna raise the needle, and what I'm gonna to need to have happen is my pleat's gonna fold under, and I want that center fold line that's going down inside to come right up in front of my needle, and if this was my fabric, I would then lower my presser foot and begin stitching my pleats. So for this first part, I'm just using this to set my marking. So I'm gonna unfold this, and I'm just taking a tiny piece of tape to make sure that I have this straight up here. Then I have a long piece of washi tape that's long enough to go underneath my whole entire pattern piece. And I'm just sliding that underneath and I'm gonna want this to go lined up right with the interior fold line. So it's helpful to have that marked on both sides of the paper. So this top line right here is where I'm going to need to mark. And if every time I hit that point, I would put a pin, then I would raise my presser foot, my needle's down, it's gonna fold back. I'm using the pin to fold that back. And then I would stitch and work my way down to the edge of the pleat. And then I will continue to do that exact same thing with the piece of fabric all the way down the length of the skirt piece. All right, so here I have my piece of fabric and I have a pin marking my first quarter inch that comes in where I'm going to start. So I'm gonna put this underneath the presser foot. I'm gonna pull that pin out. I'm gonna lower my needle down into the fabric, raise the presser foot, 
And then making sure that my fabric is straight, I have a quarter inch seam allowance marking line down here on this sewing table so I can make sure that my fabric is straight. I'm gonna put a pin in right here, right at the top of my tape. I'm gonna fold this back and I can feel when the pin then hits that needle. Lower the presser foot and I'm gonna pull that pin out then I'm just gonna stitch down just to the end of the first pleat. I'm gonna peek underneath. I still have a little bit to go. Then I'll come back here, I'll mark my second pleat right at the top of my tape marking and then I'm going to fold that under and you just hold the fabric tight, fold it under, lower the presser foot and then remove the pin and then sew your next pleat. Then I raise the presser foot and I'm gonna continue all the way down. And here's a look from the side. You can see I have the pin right here at the tape. And as we roll this back under, you can see back here we have that pin and it's right up against the needle. And then I'm able to hold this pleat down and lower that presser foot, slide out the pin, and sew the pleat. Then as we raise the presser foot, you can see that that needle is right at this front edge of the folded pleat. And here you can see that whole entire row of pleats. So I have all of these done. It's not pressed yet, but I have all the pleats all the way across the skirt. And then right here at the very end is where I should have a quarter inch seam allowance extending. And if I go to just line that up with the quarter inch that was sticking out at the beginning, you can see that I have about an eighth of an inch extension right here and I would just go in and trim that off. So that is just because I had a little bit of inconsistent folding when I tucked under my pleats that left me with a tiny bit left over but I can then just go ahead and trim that off at the very end so that I know I have quarter inch seam allowances that will match up for my center back seam. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this flat and then just press all of my pleats flat and they nicely just tuck underneath each other. And then here you can see we have a whole row of consistent pleats for that whole entire skirt. Now that's one method to get consistent pleats without having to mark them all the way down the fabric. Now say you have a different pleating dimension that you wanna do. So here's an example of the 18 inch doll skirt which has three quarter inch pleats and then the 14 and a half inch doll skirt which has half inch pleats. So you can see that the pleats on the second skirt are smaller. As I would fold these over this solid line comes to the dotted line and it creates a half inch pleat, not a three quarter inch pleat. So here I am back at the machine. This is with the smaller pleat design. So I'm gonna slide this under, set that down, lower my needle, and look 
at where this pleat fold line is gonna be. So for this one, I'm gonna show you this marked line with a different color tape. I'm gonna bring this right up here. And here I have a second row of tape. So this is marking my shorter half inch pleat line. So if I were to raise the presser foot and fold this back so that that interior fold hit my needle that's in the down position, that lines up as a half inch pleat. So here is my quarter inch seam allowance that's marked. Now I have my needle in the down position, raise the presser foot, and then fold this under to create the smaller pleat. And you'll get used to it too. You'll start counting your stitches and you'll know how many stitches you need to sew. And here you can see both types of pleats. We have the half inch pleat and the three quarter inch pleat for both sizes from both patterns. And they are pleated consistently and quickly down the row of the skirt piece. Now that's one method for knife pleats. Now the second method is making your own pleating board.